In Season 6, we won the Europa League, as well as the FA Cup the season before. And that's now five trophies ticked off in total for Glory Hunter. So let's see what happened in the other four leagues. Real Madrid won La Liga by six points. Our former team, Atletico Madrid, finished in second place. And their region had 16 goals and 14 assists in the league. And he does look amazing, by the way. An unbeaten PSG won the French League, but with 12 draws in total. And that reminds me of the Arsenal's Invincibles team. Inter Milan are the new kings of Italy right now. Bayern Munich win the German Bundesliga. And 63% of you haven't subscribed yet. So we need to change that then, please. And Manchester City win the Champions League, which shocks me because they've just sacked their manager, Vincent Company. We only have £30 million in the budget and losing both Varane and Dybala. It looks like the Glazers actually left. They never actually sold Manchester United, but now... We just don't supply any money at all. Ideal, that is. Looking at our best 11, I'd say the areas we could improve is on the left-hand side, both left-back and left-wing. And my scouts have found the perfect left-winger for me, but he will cost a lot of money from Leipzig. And I'd like to maybe bring in Nuno Mendes at left-back if I could. Less money than the left-winger, but we can't afford either right now. So I start off by selling Rykov for £25 million to AC Milan. Although Dortmund get a huge chunk of that and only £6 million is added to the budget. What an epic fail. Mason Mount is then trying to persuade Tonali to join him at Chelsea. Jog on, mate. Real Madrid then bid £45 million for Hernandez, who's 31. And we sell him. But again, only £17 million is added to the budget. I try and go for Nuno Mendes when they absolutely try to take the mick with what they are asking for. £90 million is way more than I'm willing to pay. So I guess... I need to start looking elsewhere. I've also decided to accept a bid for Serge Gnabry from Juve because it will give me enough money for potentially a good left winger. Now that all the players have left and we have a great budget to work with, let's see what we can do. I got an offer accepted for Secretario for around £90 million and it is a huge amount of my budget, yes. He is world class though, I'm just still not sure where we should go through with it. So I actually bid for another three players instead. Let's see what happens with that. Manchester City, by the way, have a new manager and it's Brendan Rodgers, which has left the Juventus job available yet again. This time, though, I think we're in a better position with Manchester United than what we were with Atletico Madrid, so I don't think I'm going to apply this time round. Our first signing is Mark Kukurea, who solves our left-back problem for £45 million. He is a quality defender with amazing mental attributes and a good pass on him too. I'm also very aware that that's like the third Brighton player out of four players that I've signed for Manchester United so far, but there we go. Two more signings are arriving as we sign Bosnian regen Dedic, who is going to be a quality squad player for us are only £6 million. And the Serge Nabry replacement, Moyes Keane, who I dare say is probably better than Serge, for £37 million. Another world-class arrival, Milinkovic Savic from Lazio again for £37 million. He might be 32 now, but it's what it could be to take us from third in the league to title winners, in my opinion. I'm also noticing Demaral keeps getting the highest training rating every single week, so I think that deserves a reward. A start against Manchester City in the Super Cup. And there he is alongside Eric Garcia. SMS also starts in midfield and Kukurea at left back with Moise Keane sat on the bench. The game finished 0-0 and Manchester City won on penalties. Never mind. But a 3-2 loss to Everton on the opening day of the Premier League and the Arsenal game is up next. And this is kind of already a must win for us. Pretty much how I've got to turn it round to must wins in my fantasy league. Now you can still join Spitch even though there's been a couple of weeks played already because it is a week by week thing. You can also still catch us up because the point system is definitely the best around on any fantasy footballing app. You get many more points for things other than just goals, assists, and clean sheets. And again, unlike any other fantasy football app, you can start a brand new 11 every single week. There's no transfer restrictions, which is one of the favorite things that I've got about Spitch, in my opinion. It kind of means that nobody ends up with the same team at the end of it as well, which really frustrates me. I've got a community league, which you can join. There's two links in the description. The top one is to sign up for Spitch. The second one is my community league. But there's also season mode, where Spitch will take your top five lineups throughout the cross the season and with a chance to win a huge jackpot prize. There is a free version of that too, but you have to be 18 years of age or over to enter and take a snap of your identification. And you have to be from the UK, Austria or Germany to take part. But like again, there's two links at the top of the description. If you meet all those criteria, 
First one's to sign up, second one's to join my community league. Let's get back to the video. So against Arsenal, it's Kunde and Garcia again at the back. And a debut start for Moise Keane on the left and Rashford drops to the bench. Arsenal also lost their first game and we slammed them down to 20th place in the league when Mbappe scored the opener. Bruno Fernandes then picked up a second just before half time. In the second half, Mbappe was masterful in the box and found Sancho for our third. Back in business in the next game with a 7-1 win against Newcastle and another Mbappe hat-trick. After a 4-4 draw of West Ham where Mbappe was invisible and only got a 6.3 up top. So I punished him and I dropped him and played 21-year-old Dedic who we've just bought again for £6 million. He scored his first in the first minute, his second in the 11th and he secured a hat-trick by the 18th minute. And just to really stamp his name, he got a fourth in the second half. And it wasn't a fluke because the next game he got a hat-trick against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Two wins in the Champions League and one in the EFL Cup and we had a pretty good month. Bruno Fernandes puts us in the lead in the Manchester derby but Erling Haaland equalised late. However, from a corner, Bosnian Dedic popped up and scored the winner in his first Manchester derby. What a hero. We then did suffer back-to-back -back losses when we got beat at home to Leipzig and Aston Villa. That's not great. An 82nd minute own goal by Delo and Danny Olmo finish meant we suffered another defeat at the hands of Leipzig. Dedic's movement is exceptional and yet again he scores not one goal but two in the Premier League. And he took that form into the Champions League as we travelled to Portugal against Porto. A very entertaining 6-4 victory where a young Dedic picked up four goals and the build-up play for the fourth especially was beautiful. What a performance. Another great month in the league and hopefully we can still qualify in the Champions League. We currently sit top of the league by four points ahead of City and Everton. Liverpool have been very poor though but our Champions League group we do look likely to finish in second place which is not fantastic. It's also the end of November so lots of jobs are starting to pop up. We finished second in our group after beating Copenhagen with Dedic getting both goals. We finally lose the league when Trossard scores the only goal of the game against Brighton. But then a 4-1 win against Spurs. And a 5-1 win against Liverpool with yet again another two goals from Dedic and we are back to our best. In what turned out to be a difficult month ending with a draw in the Manchester derby at the Etihad. A great month for the club when Dedic won FIFA Under-21 Player of the Year. Absolutely incredible. Mbappe, however, he won the Ballon d'Or. But it's Dedic who is our top scorer with 23 goals in only 14 starts. And how did Mbappe react to this, you ask? Well, he went out at Old Trafford, probably held the Ballon d'Or aloft in front of the crowd before the game, then proceeded to absolutely demolish Southampton's defence, scoring four goals in a 6-2 victory. Other than the EFL exit, January was brilliant, ending in a 2-1 win against Arsenal with our boys scoring goals. And we are now nine points clear in the league with Real Madrid to play in the Champions League. In the first and the home leg of the tie, Mbappe opened the scoring. Ruben Neves equalised from the spot, but Ramiz Dedic got the winner yet again. And of course he did from the right-hand side. However, the whole month wasn't too great when Liverpool smashed us 5-1 at Anfield. A draw, though, against Leicester, and just like that, our nine points ahead is reduced to four. The same result happened at the Bernabeu, but Rashford picked up the two goals and Neves got another penalty. Into Milan next, and still four points ahead in the league with eight games to go. The first leg in Milan, and Inter Milan pinch a winner in the 91st minute. But they could not handle the high press at Old Trafford, and we scored two outrageous goals, pinning Inter Milan in their box to win the quarter-final tie 3-2 on aggregate, where we will face Zinedine Zidane's Bayern Munich team. A 3-0 win against Brentford in the league and a 3-1 win at Swansea meant that we pushed closer to the title. A 4-1 win against Wolves and we were a Manchester City slip-up away from winning the Premier League. We then beat West Ham 3-0 at home, but Manchester City also won their game as well, beating Brentford 2-1 after being 1-0 down and scoring in the 89th minute to keep them in it just. However, we could not break down Newcastle's three at the back and we bottled winning the league at St. James's Park. Or so we thought. Ivan Tony equalised against Manchester City in the 86th minute and the game finished 2-2, meaning that we are crowned Premier League champions, adding another trophy to the Glory Hunter cabinet. And it means we can rest our crucial players for the cup games coming up. Because after beating Blackburn in the semi-final 4-0, we are also in the FA Cup final against Leicester. Which also means the Sir Alex Ferguson treble of the FA Cup, the Premier League and the Champions League 
that's still on the cards. However, it did take a knock right after when we played Bayern Munich in the semi-final first leg. We took the lead in the first half and Bayern shortly equalized. No panic though, we took the lead yet again, but Kareem Adeyemi scored again. And then my former player at Borussia Dortmund, Adeyemi, then scored his hat-trick from the spot, 3-2. And then add another former Dortmund player of mine, Makoko, who scored to make it 4-2. And finally, Jamal Musiala scored really late and we left Munich 5-2 down. Second leg, and we go with our strongest team available. Goalkeeper Sanchez is out of a concussion. Kukurea has just recovered from a broken leg, which he's been out for about five months from now. And Dedic, he's also injured for this match. And it took until the second half, but Jaden Sancho scored almost from kickoff. Fortunately, Bruno Fernandes was rash, and he received a straight red card, making our task even more tricky. However, even though we were down to 10 men, it didn't stop Jaden Sancho from getting yet another goal, and putting us just one away from sending us into extra time. But Bayern Munich held on despite us having 15 shots on target to hold it at 2-0. We were eliminated from the competition. Three more wins, including the hat-trick from Youth Academy prospect Gary Perkins against West Brom. Just like that, it's FA Cup final time and with Sancho only good enough for the bench, Mbappe slots on the right and Dedic takes his place up front. Dan's guard was the guy to open the scoring from a well-worked goal. We then equalised when Bruno Fernandes put Rashford through on goal. Delo's cross was then met by an unreal header by SMS, but unfortunately Dan's guard scored another to tie the final 2-2. But it did not stay at Desmond in the 90th minute. Dedic headed the ball across the goal and Pedro Porro was there to score the winner. And the board are buzzing with that performance. That second FA Cup win in the Premier League adds to my reputation and increases to four and a half stars out of five. But where do we go from here? Do we stay in the Premier League despite already ticking it off and try and potentially win the Champions League? Or do we look to move on? Because there's a certain job that's just popped up. Into Milan in the Serie A.